When I first came across this so-called Grandis series, I didn't think a whole lot of it. By using our standard methods, this series clearly diverges. Just use the test for divergence, see that this limit doesn't exist, and there you go. I saw the unrigorous attempts at trying to sum this series. If you arrange parentheses like this, it looks like we're just adding up a bunch of zeros, and so this sum should be zero? But if you arrange parentheses like this, it looks like we're adding up one plus a bunch of zeros, and so the sum should be one? Clearly associativity wasn't going to do the job. The next unrigorous method tries to use the distributive law. Just do one minus this sum and distribute. You would basically distribute the negative, and so we would end up getting 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1. That's just the original sum we started with. And so, 1 minus the sum equals the sum? Or 1 equals twice the sum? And the sum is 1 half? Like, no way, that's totally ridiculous. Adding and subtracting a bunch of 1s to get a half makes no intuitive sense, and I was about to write this off as a fluke. but. As I dug deeper, this one half kept showing up. There's this idea of Cesaro summation, which instead of doing a traditional sum, which is the limit of the partial sums, it takes the average of the partial sums. This summation is sort of like a less restrictive convergence, and when we apply it to our Grandi series, you get one half. And it turns out there are numerous methods that when applied to this series, you get one half. But despite all this, I still wasn't really convinced yet. Until I started to look at the geometric series. The good old geometric series x to the n summed from n equals 0 to infinity, this equals 1 over 1 minus x, so long as x is between minus 1 and 1, not including those endpoints. If we substituted x equals negative 1, we get our Grandi series. But we can't substitute negative 1 into the formula 1 over 1 minus x, that's outside the interval of convergence. Well, it's really right on the tip of the interval of convergence. So if we can't evaluate right at x equals negative 1, what if we approached it? What if we did limits? If we let x approach negative 1, then the geometric series approaches the Grandi series, and its sum approaches 1 over 1 minus minus 1, or 1 half. That's pretty interesting, but we know limits as x approaches a can be different than the function evaluated at a. I was just about to give up when I stumbled across this idea that has become very popular at explaining these type of weird phenomenon, this idea of analytic continuation. That interval of convergence, minus 1 to 1, think of that as like a domain of this function. We want to extend that, we want to push the boundaries to include more things. A way to do that is through Taylor series. Taylor series give us great approximations for a function around a certain value. You see, the sum of x to the n is basically like a Taylor series centered at a equals 0 for the function 1 over 1 minus x. Well, let's come up with a different Taylor series centered around a different value so we can push or move that domain, that interval of convergence. To make it alternate like our Grandi series, let's just substitute in negative x to get the function 1 over 1 plus x. We'll find the Taylor series for this centered at a. How do we do that? Well, we need to take derivatives of this thing until we see a pattern, basically, and then substitute x equals a. The zeroth derivative is the function itself. You could take another derivative using the reciprocal rule, another derivative using the reciprocal rule, and if you don't combine anything, you start to see this alternating pattern as well as a factorial shows up. And it looks like after doing repeated derivatives, the pattern f nth derivative evaluated at a is n factorial over 1 plus a to the n plus 1. Let's just slip this into our Taylor series formula. The sum from n equals 0 to infinity of that derivative we just found times x minus a to the n over n factorial. This is pretty nice because once we substitute this in, a bunch of stuff cancels, and we get this nice simplified Taylor series. What you might notice is that if we let a equals 0, you just get the good old geometric series. So the geometric series is sort of just centered at 0. 
But centering at zero didn't work because of its interval of convergence. We want our interval of convergence to be around x equals one. Why one? Well, that's because if we substitute one into this, we get our Grandi series. So we should probably pick a to be something close to one. There's many choices we could use here. Let's use three quarters. If we substitute 3 fourths for a and do a ratio test to see what the interval of convergence is, we see that x equals 1 is indeed inside this interval. So we're all good. Now the fun part. This Taylor series is a geometric series, and we know how to sum it. The way we sum geometric series is a over 1 minus r, a is the first term of the series, r is that common ratio. Let's just substitute these values in. A little bit of algebraic simplification, and what do you know, we get 1 over 1 plus x, which we should. So if we substitute in x equals 1 via an analytic continuation, this equals our Grandi series, and its sum converges to 1 over 1 plus 1, or 1 half. I'm still not entirely sure that I'm convinced, but this argument is pretty compelling. If you want absolutely no dispute over an amazing convergent sum, Click the video on the screen right here. I'll sum you in that one.